most amateur game developers perform their collectible system like this. They use an enum and they check if it triggers with the player and then they switch through this enum type and then do actions accordingly, right? This is pretty reasonable. But what if I tell you there's a much better way to do things? What if there's a way to just, you know, get rid of this enum, get rid of this entire switch statement, and even get rid of this if condition in which we compare tag for player. What if there's a much simpler and neater way to implement collectibles in your game? So let's talk about how we do that. So let's start off by uh, discussing on what is the problem with this method? Why is it so bad? It's, it's not bad, but it's not great because there's a much better alternative out there. Firstly, we use an enum, which is okay. It has its own benefits, like you get a drop down in the inspector. This part is reasonably okay. Now, if the collectible is of type coin, logically speaking, why should it contain code to add health? I mean, it does not make sense. Why does it contain code to call speed boost from the player? It, ethically speaking, it's not a good way of programming. Also with this, constant 20f for the health that is completely bad if we cache it into a variable over here it will always appear for both coin and speed which means we cannot customize it in the editor which is another bad thing about this another thing is we are checking if we collide with the player by using this compare tag method which is okay which is a great way of checking for collisions and stuff but what if there's a way to just remove it entirely and just to let you know uh, this player script simply contains functions that does everything there for us. Um, so as I promised, we're not going to need this enum. We're not going to need this complete method and we're not going to need this if condition. So the, the way we're going to implement this is using the concept of inheritance and we create an abstract class as the base class. So let me show you what it is. So before we write this class, we just specify it as abstract. And this means that this class may contain methods that are abstract in nature. And by abstract, it means it physically does not exist, all right? So it's just a blank method, which will be defined in the child classes of that class. So we can create an abstract method inside this class. If you're confused, don't worry about it. Let's just see how things work and then maybe you'll get an idea of how things work. So we can create a public abstract void and we'll call this on collect. And since it's an abstract function, we cannot create a body for it. And we'll just directly end this with a semicolon. And voila, we have created an abstract function. And now where will we call this function? We'll call it inside on trigger enter 2D. That's it. So we have this undefined class called on collect. And in the parent class, whenever we trigger, we just call this function. That's pretty much it for this script. And the way we are going to do this is by creating multiple scripts. So we go to the scripts folder, create a separate folder for the collectibles and then create a C sharp script. Let's create a script for coin. And now let's just get rid of the start and update. And instead of deriving it from mono behavior, it's going to derive from collectible. And immediately you can see a red squiggly line over here. So you just hover your mouse over it. And inside Visual Studio, you press Alt and Enter. And then you select the first option, which is implement abstract class, or you can just simply press Enter. And it will create an override function for this base abstract function that you created here. So we're going to override that function and that's how we do it. So we need to get the player somehow inside this coin. And the way we do that is going back to the collectible script and then creating an argument of type player. We'll call it player. And over here, we're going to say collision dot get component player. So we're going to pass the player component of the player and inside coin, we also need to say player player. And then we simply say player dot collect coin, which is a function that we have inside the player script. And then we simply destroy 
game object. Cool. Let's also make another script for health pickup. We'll just get rid of start and update. We'll derive it from collectible. Click on this alt enter, implement abstract class, and we can simply say player dot add health, which is a function inside player. Uh, this is going to show an error because inside the function we have a float value. This is the advantage of creating child classes because now you can have specific properties for this particular child class. So we can say serialize field float health. We can set it to let's say 30f and we can you know pass in the health over here which means now we can have a property that is specific to health pickup and the coin does not know about it which by itself is a much better way of coding things and we can create other classes like this so for each collectible we are going to create a separate script and you can see that it is very very simple you just have a few lines of code and you get the job done compared to the previous one and now let's check if it works so we'll go to the coin prefab open it and we can add a component called coin uh, and for the health pickup you can go to the prefab and add a component called health pickup and now you can see that you can add a value for the health let's set it to 45 before we play the starting health of the player is 50 and coin collected is zero just a quick mention if you're interested in how i created this character controller over here I have a video on it on the top right. Now let's play the game and you can see that um, the collectibles work, health becomes 95 and coins becomes two, it works. Cool. Now currently whenever the trigger happens, uh, I said there won't be an if condition inside this thing. Then how do we check if it's exactly the player? What if, what if another body triggers this trigger? So it does not make sense, right? So only the player should be able to collide. So how do we do that without using an if condition? It's actually pretty, pretty simple. Uh, <laughs> the way we're going to do that is not via code, but inside Unity itself. So uh, just create an empty game object, uh, reset the transform. Let's call this collectibles. And this is really, really important. And now let's select all the collectibles and then make it a child of this parent. All right. And we're going to achieve this functionality with the help of layers. So we're going to go to the player prefab. We're going to create a la layer called player and you need to click on yes, change children. So the player is assigned a layer called player. Uh, and for the collectibles, you don't have to go to each collectible. You can just go to this parent and then create a layer by clicking on add layer and I'll call it collectibles and just click on this and then choose the collectibles layer and then choose yes change children and then you just simply have to go to each individual prefab and then click on overrides and apply all so i have two here so just click apply all and it will apply to the prefab so you don't have to go to each one and then change it so this is much faster another most important bit is to go to edit project settings and you can go to physics 2d if you are working on 3d you go to physics and if you scroll down you can see that there is a collision matrix over here and you can see that the collectibles layer interact with almost everything. So we just need to uncheck everything other than player. So the collectible should only collide or interact with the player. And that's it. So the collectibles will not react or collide with anything else. So it makes sense, right? So we can just completely avoid this if condition here, which is great. And Unity already has this thing. so. Let's just see if it works. I'll also add a random rigid body and make it fall on top of it so that it does not trigger anything. And you can see that nothing is triggered. It does not interact at all. And that is the way we do things. So just to revise, we created an abstract class. We created an abstract function and on trigger, we just call that function. And inside each child class, we just overridden that function and then did whatever that we need to do for that particular child class. And I hope that made sense. But basically, yeah, you can utilize this concept of inheritance. So you can just take advantage of that and then create individual scripts for each behavior that we want to, you know, simulate. So that's it for this video. I hope this was useful to you. So yeah, take care. See ya. Bye-bye.